So, AG couldn't make it to record this week. Uh, he has a cough, and he's apparently down to a whisper. He's like, I can't record, man. It's really hard to talk. So, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, we actually did have a a thing recorded where, like, it's us saying that we're sorry that we can't record. Uh, probably third world internet or something like that um and you know the the reason i didn't put that out was because i wanted to talk about uh about words and the attacks on paris so if you're here to listen to me and my best friend talk about our linux lives in the third world um check back next week but if you want to hang out with me for the next couple of minutes and listen to the ramblings of a very tired law student. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Zhao. And wow. <laughs> um, so first off, our thoughts and prayers go out to the city of Paris, to the people in the city of Paris and to everybody that was affected by the attacks there right if you have if you have friends or family that uh that were affected you know i thoughts and prayers right um and uh i hope they're okay you know i hope your friends and family are okay or, or if we have any listeners um from paris i hope you're doing okay and it's sort of like um it's sort of like when when there was an earthquake that hit my hometown and Typhoon Haiyan hit like a week later, um, somebody actually tweeted us, like one of our listeners tweeted us asking if we were okay. And that was, that was a really moving thing. You know, it's, it's something that I'm never going to, I'm never going to forget, um, that there was somebody, that there was somebody on the internet that showed human decency um, in a time of tragedy, right? Because, like, looking through my Facebook wall and, you know, looking through articles on the internet, the comment sections, etc., like, you can see the amount of, um, the amount of indecency, um, in, in the wake of tragedy, right? You have all of these people politicizing it, these, you know, this is why we need to have an armed society, or, um something about refugees or you know it's just it's just irritating right like how um how tragedy uh can be spun in such a way that uh yeah how tragedy can just be spun in such a in such a way that it sort of pushes your agenda or whatever the agendization the agendization of tragedy <laughs> you know when um when all you really need to do is just be a decent human being right and yes i'm aware that um violence happens you know all the time because of like misguided terrorist groups right like the southernmost uh island of the philippines are our, our our big island in the south, Mindanao, they see violence on pretty much a daily basis, right? Um, and uh, I, I also do know that violence has always been around, um, and you know it probably was just as bad back then. It's just that now we have CNN, right? Like, you know. So yeah, I am aware of that. Um, but you know, I guess we could still talk about it, right? <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on geopolitics and I'm not going to be, or I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on, uh, Islamic theology and the Quran or whatever, but you know, it's just, it just really sucks, right? Um, it just really sucks that, that, that a group of people can take words and use these words as a justification to perpetuate insane acts of violence right um you have you have what is uh i think if or i'm not sure but 
like some of the Islamic scholars that I've read um, speak about jihad as an internal struggle to do the right thing. Like that's your holy war. Right? But um, what sucks is that you have this small group of people that take words from a book, use it as their justification for what is pretty much genocide, right? Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that words, language, right? Really powerful stuff, as it turns out. Um, you know, you, you can, you can take words from the Quran and use them as your justification for, uh, attacking the five points in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. You know, you can... You can take a little red book written by some Chinese dude in the the middle of the 20th century and uh, use that as, you know, your justification to silence any dissidents by saying they're counter to the revolution and subsequently killing them. Like, like words, man. Language. Powerful stuff. Especially if uh, you, you... Especially if you use words as... A sort of vehicle for hate you know uh, our sort of official or unofficial like tagline or mantra thing in channel 14 is hashtag for love and this was sort of born out of this idea that there's just so much hate on the internet um, there's just like when you look through your Facebook walls, it becomes like a very toxic place. And, you know, part of me really wants to get off of Facebook, but that's where law school people are. And that's how I have to interact with them and get the assignments and stuff. But there's just all that hate. And when you use the power of words to perpetuate the hate it just pretty much sucks for everybody so uh i i guess what like I, I guess it would do the world a lot of good if we all sort of understand that words do have this power and use our words in a way that they don't perpetuate a culture of of hate you know where where we where we use our words to show human decency that's that's sort of what i'm taking away from uh that's what i'm taking away from all of the violence that's been going on right like, if we're just nice to each other, if we're just decent human beings, we could theoretically make the world a quote-unquote better place, you know? Um, not at the scale that we all hope for the world to be. We hope the change to be. Yeah, not, not to that scale, but at least in our little corner of the world... Everybody's a little bit nicer to each other. Yeah. So, just going back, it's like something as simple as asking how you're doing. That seemingly benign phrase, you know, can make an impact. Even if it's just a little tiny bit. So, yeah. I hope you're all doing okay. <laughs>